In my previous videos I talked about joins and there was one join that I said you shouldn't choose unless you really know what you're doing and have a need for it and that is the cross join. But how can you actually use it and what cases would you need it? Hello I'm Philip Burton of filecats.co.uk and what we're going to be doing is having a look at some animals in a zoo. So we have got these five animals, lion, tiger, elephant, monkey and giraffe. And they are all present at the zoo at different times, mostly in the year 2023. What I want to do is have a list of all of these five animals and which animals they have met. In other words, which animals were there at the zoo at the same time. So another way of looking at this is in a Gantt chart. And here is a Gantt chart in Excel. So you can see that the line who was there between January and June will have met the tiger, the elephant and the monkey at some point. The tiger would have met the lion and the monkey. The elephant would have met the lion and the giraffe. The monkey would have met the lion and the tiger and the giraffe would have met the elephant. So that is what we want. That is the output. So what I've got here is some code which creates a table. So it's a very standard table. The only thing which is not standard is this at the top, drop table if exists. This was brought in in SQL Server 2016. So if you don't have that, then there are other ways to find out if a table exists before dropping it. So how do we get a list of all of the animals and which animals they have potentially met. Well, the first stage is to generate a list of all of the animals against all of the other animals. And that is a perfect situation for using the cross join because the cross join multiplies. So it will give me the first row, lion, and then all of the animals against lion, the second, tiger, and all of the animals against tiger. So what we can do is say, okay, this is our first table. I'm going to alias it as Z or Z1. And then I'm going to do a cross join with the same table. And we're going to call that Z2. So now let's look at where we are. We have got all five animals against the lion, all five animals against the tiger, all five animals against the elephant, against the monkey, and against the giraffe. So we started off with five rows, we've now got 25 rows. So now we've got that, we can start trying to answer the question, what has the lion met? Well, the lion won't have met itself. We don't need to include the lion. So the first thing we need to do is exclude that. So where z1.id is not equal to z2.id. So in other words, we do not want id1 matching with id1. So now, a line is just up against four animals, a tiger up against a different four animals. It's not up against tiger itself. Right, so, so far so good. Now let's have a look at this line. It's, it's there in January, it leaves in June. Now, which animals will it have seen? Well, any animals whose start date, who arrived, whose start date, is in the same time period as the lion's residency at the zoo. So the tiger, the monkey, and the elephant. So let's code that bit in. It's not a complete answer, but it's good so far. So, and where the start date of an animal is in the time period of the second animal. So what can we use for that? We can say, between the start date and the end date. So now let's have a look and see what we've got. So now we have the lion is there at the same time as the tiger, the elephant and the monkey. The tiger is there at the same time as the monkey and the lion. So there's the tiger. The elephant is there at the same time as the lion and the giraffe. The monkey is there at the same time as the lion and the tiger and the giraffe is there at the same time as the elephant. And that is actually the correct answer. But it's inelegantly given because we've got tiger in two different columns. So to get it into the same set of columns, 
we need to repeat this. So now, so we've taken this animal being in this time period. So now what we need to do is have this animal being in this time period. So I can then say where this is the case, or when the opposite is the case. So in other words, where the same thing is the case, but using the other animals. So now if we run that, then we get twice as many rows, but now we can see in one column, the animal, and in another column, the animal that it has met. So if I was to reduce this now to this animal, so Z2 dot animal and Z1 animal, and we call that animal met. So now we can see that the lion has met the tiger, the elephant and the monkey. The tiger has met the lion and the monkey. The elephant has met the lion and the giraffe. The monkey has met the lion and the tiger and the giraffe has met the elephant. So we're just going to go one stage further, but it's important to where we've got to. We have used the cross join to compare every animal with every other animal, giving us the square of what we started off with. So we started off with five rows, we've now got 25. We have excluded ones where the animal met itself. So that takes us down from five times five to five times four. And then we've looked at the relevant dates when they were there. So now you can see we're down to 10. So that does answer the question, but let's get it a bit more elegant. And we can do this using a function that was introduced in SQL Server in 2017. So if you don't have SQL Server 2017, this is as far as you can go easily. There are other ways of doing this, but this is a very easy way. What I'm going to use is a function called string underscore ag, ag being the shorthand for aggregate. So what it's going to do is it's joining them together. Now I need a second parameter and that parameter is, well, what do you want to join them with? So you could join them with nothing, but then you would have tiger, elephant, monkey, all as one word. So I'm going to join them with a comma and a space. So what this is going to give us is lion and these three animals, tiger and these two, elephant and these two, monkey and these two, and giraffe and this one. So it's a very elegant function when you wish to group together text. However, notice what I just said, group together. It will not work because this is a grouping function, just like sum and count and min and max. So what we need to do is introduce a group by, just like every other aggregation. So group by, and we're grouping by this, z2.animal, because this one is the aggregating function like sum and count. So now let's run this and we can now see the animal and the animals that they have met. So maybe I just want a little bit more. I want to put in the ID. So let's put in z2.id and then I've got to also put it into the group by because it is a non-aggregation with an aggregation. So now we've got ID one line, met the tiger, elephant and monkey. The tiger met the lion and monkey. The elephant met the lion and the giraffe. The monkey met the lion and the tiger and the giraffe only met the elephant. It's a very nice function when you've got the need to use it. Also notice that it doesn't end with comma. So it's not tiger comma, elephant comma, monkey comma, or elephant comma. It just puts a comma in between occasions of z1.animal, it doesn't put it at the end as well. So in this video, we've had a look at cross join, which multiplies a table by itself, and then seen how we can use the where clause to reduce it to certain criteria, and then use the string underscore ag function introduced in SQL Server 2017 to just combine them all together into a nice, neat list. Thank you for joining me in this video. If you like it, then please click the like button and why not subscribe and click the bell next to it so you'll be notified of any new videos. Thank you for watching this and keep learning.